How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we have my partner Dandy for a very special Pride Month episode where we're going to be ranking our favorite queer cartoons for children, cartoons for children, queer cartoons! So we have a couple of shows that we're going to be doing today and all of these shows either one of us has watched and most of them both of us have watched together we didn't want to include any shows that we haven't seen yet i know there's a lot of shows out right now that has lgbtq representation but we want it to be fair and also this tier list doesn't have an e or f category because honestly almost all of these shows are really good they're dope yeah they're dope af so we're not going to give anything an f but we are going to try to be as impartial and unbiased as possible when we give this I'm ranking. <laughs> so the first show we have is Arthur actually. Uh, Holy but a goodie. <laughs> yeah, I grew up watching Arthur. It was one of my favorite shows going up. And a few years ago, do you remember the year? Mm -hmm. We'll put it up here somewhere. A few years ago, uh, Mr. Ratburn? Ratburn. Ratburn came out as queer with uh, his partner. So Wait, we have text in the family. Okay. I put my phone on silent. Yeah, because I was making too much noise. But, yes, Arthur was something that I grew up with and I absolutely loved. And to have one of our favorite childhood TV shows have an LGBTQ character is pretty awesome. After all these years. <laughs> so, what do you want to give it? We have S rank, A rank, B rank, C or D. Okay. Um, what criteria? I don't know how queer it is or how amazingly queer it is. I don't know. I didn't really think this out. Honestly, it's just how we feel about it. Oh, so this is purely subjective. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to have to give Arthur on queerness and like queer representation a B rank. Why do you think it's a B? It took Mr. Rapper in 20 what years? <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of realistic for some people. <laughs> Like, damn, I know he was a teacher and everything, but El Elwood, El Elwood City, wherever Arthur lives, seems pretty progressive to me. Yeah, and like, even I, I would also give it a B because of the fact that children are still watching Arthur, and now they have a queer character in a very, 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 like, for youth public service but, TV show. But how consistent is the, like, is his representation, like, is he is he in the world of Arthur as a gay man, or is he in one episode of Arthur as a gay man? I mean, we don't know that because we don't watch Arthur anymore. Do. You do? I'm a nanny. Oh, <laughs> oh, so like yeah. How <laughs> how is it? Uh, is I B. You think it's a B? Then I would put it down to a C if it's not that much. Oh, B plus. B plus, but <laughs> that's higher. Okay, I would put it as a B. Here we go. All right, next up. We have Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beasts, which is a show I really liked the first two seasons, and then it kind of went downhill in the last season. So my beef with Kipo is that they are obviously representing like inequality and injustice through like um, you know like a child-friendly, easily digestible lens. Now, the last what one or two episodes where all the humans are trying to force the animals to, like, accept their apology is just, like, not only high-key cringe, like, nobody's gonna break out in song and I'm gonna say, oh, I forgive you! <laughs> also, I... Burning a cross in my yard and killing my brother? Like, no, fam. No. No. Yeah. There was no accountability. There was... It was just, like, what What the hell were y'all... Anyway. Also, I really don't... There's police sirens in the background. But I also really don't like the idea of someone has to die to make amends, right? Yeah. Scarlamane had a really great, like... Arc. Redemption yeah. arc. Oh, my God. Yeah. We, we love that bitch. Yeah, but um, Scarlamane didn't have to die, and I low-key wanted Scarlamane to be a queer character, too. I mean, he just gave off queer he energy. <laughs> Honestly. Look at the pants. Yeah, I think the only out... Flying flamingo car? <laughs> oh, um... I think the only out couple was Benson, Benson. and his boyfriend, which I really liked that sp specific couple because it was an interracial couple and it wasn't the traditional white and a person of color. Yeah. It was... Because that's boring. Yeah. We're it was, bored with that. <laughs> it was a black person with 
a Latinx person. Also, they were gay, which I've read multiple articles on why how it's so easy for people to write in lesbian characters because it's, I don't know, more like accept acceptable in society. But because we love to objectify women's bodies and sexuality, but that's not yeah. here nor there. It's everywhere, but whatever. Yeah, so I do like the fact that it's a gay couple, and it's a kid's show, so I'm gonna give Kipo an A. Okay, I'm gonna give Kipo an F. We're gonna create the <laughs> F category, because there is no instance where the population harmed should do so much emotional labor for the population that harmed Yeah, them. but this this one is about F. how... <laughs> Okay, I, let's go. Let's go in between an A versus an F is a C. The next show we have is Avatar: The Legend of Korra, and you know, I love The Legend of Korra. It's one of my favorite animated shows of all time. However, I do want to recognize that it's a very, very flawed show. It has both an imperialist versus anti-imperialist theme. At you some got cops out the ass. Yeah. A cab. So like, I feel like the show kind of has an identity crisis because you see Korra struggling with getting things done with world leaders that are very, very much fascist, but at the same time, she complies with it. So. Yeah. It. It's a really good representation of like what happens in the like like the real world, though. You know, like you mm -hmm. can't. You can't necessarily change the system by becoming a part of the system. I also see a lot of people critiquing Korra for her decisions, but she's still a child through yeah. most of the show. This ended when she was like 19, 20 years old. You know what I was doing when I was 19 and 20 years old? Panic attacks. That's all I know <laughs> how to do. Um, I'm going to give it an S tier. Honestly. We haven't even talked about... I don't uh, care. It's, it's <laughs> S tier. But... Korra was the first show to show, animated show for children that had queer characters. Although they didn't kiss, there was that last scene at the end of the show that verified. We saw your shadows. <laughs> Sneaky bitch. Also, they were sending little love notes to each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Legend of Korra gets an S. Yeah, S tier yeah. all the way. It really made a lot of moves when it was released. And also, d what Nickelodeon tried to do for the show, I think the creators did as much as they could based on their limitations. Okay, up next is everybody's favorite Steven Universe. Oh my god! Do we even have to have this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> it's an S tier. This, this show... Even with all the fillers, which were like <laughs> canon anyway, except for that one Uncle Grandpa bullshit. That was not cool. Cartoon Network, <laughs> we will never forgive you for that. You're evil. They really tried to make Uncle Grandpa trendy. It's not Gumball. It can never be Gumball. It was never Gumball. Gumball is Gumball, and Steven is Steven. <laughs> yeah, Steven Universe is definitely S tier. Yeah, this opinion. is not a conversation. It's, 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 it's a gay agenda TV show. Yeah. We <laughs> this wrote this, actually. <laughs> Communally, the, the queer population yeah. of the entire world All the together. queers got together and made this show We happen. had a poll. Oh, my God. The doodles that we had to fill out. <laughs> the Zoom meetings. Ugh. Up next, we have... The Dragon Prince. Aww. Yeah, and I honestly don't see the Dragon Prince making a lot of, making into the lists of queer TV shows online. Even though it's like explicit representation, it's like my moms were the queens. Yeah. <laughs> they birthed one of them birthed me, and then <laughs> both of them raised me. And they were both my mothers, and they loved each other. Also, they have two gay men kissing. And like, the elves? Yeah, the elves. These are two gay elves. <laughs> also, they're super tragic story. Practically fairies, <laughs> and they're kissing. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then they had to die? The fuck? <laughs> yeah, and the two gay moms also died. The fuck? Also, the show killed off the one black king. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Hold up, nah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I feel like... on. This gets B, then. I Why? think it gets a C. Because right. because of like how like implicitly it's a little problematic where they killing off killing off <laughs> all the <laughs> minorities. <laughs> oh, here you get this one mixed kid, his selfish white brother, and a racially ambiguous but white passing elf. <laughs> also, 
the dragon prince has a non-binary character a black non-binary character oh yeah yeah we love that bitch and amaya and the other sun fire elf is almost going to be a couple it's hinted that they're going to be Ooh, a couple and it's really cool that they have um deaf representation they do and they hired deaf consultants to help with the signing yeah yeah i thought you were gonna say voice actor and i was like <laughs> No, expecting. I wasn't gonna say when voice you, well, acting. Well, when you say cartoon, you think voice acting, but like that's my bad. I Hashtag guess. subtle ableism. Am yeah. I right? That's me. Yeah. That's all me. I, I acknowledge yeah. that. I give the Dragon Prince a C. Can we give it a C plus? Yeah, we can give it a C plus. Let's just, like right here. Yeah. <laughs> we can do that. C's make degrees. Yeah. All right, next show that we have, this is one that I haven't really watched that much, but you love it, and it's Craig of the Creek. Okay, I don't have my glasses on, but I saw JP's rectangle-ass head. Uh, I love this show for so many reasons. It's like an honest and true depiction of blackness, and um, without it being like the center of any of like the comedy or the jokes or whatever that they're playing, it's, it's funny because it's true, not because it hurts right like this is pure black joy and childhood and like honest representation of what blackness is not the monolith of blackness but like it's just some stupid ass kid and it's two stupid ass friends like make believing in a, in the backyard creek of their neighborhood it's fantastic and i, I also this. really love the message of you know kids of color going into academia and being interested in science and stem yeah and yeah craig is like a little engineering genius and he's an artist and it's like you know the multitude it's yeah. fantastic um i give this an s plus um <laughs> it's it's not very it's not very gay outside of the fact that like you know like blackness can never subscribe to like the whiteness of society or white supremacy and like being black is inherently non-normative in that framework of like a white supremacist society so um it gets um s plus uh tier god level <laughs> um this this show is amazing so i actually looked this up but Craig of the creek has gay characters lesbian characters it has an transgender character oh yeah. yeah no it do got all that shit yeah my bad y'all this show gay as hell go watch it <laughs> yeah it's a good show it's great for kids i wish it was around when i was a kid because i had so much doubt in my life but with people telling me i can't do this and that and yeah. craig of the creek really tells kids that you can do anything you set your mind into that's how gay I am. I just don't even notice the queer character. We're gonna give Craig of the Creek an S. Yay! Craig of the Creek. I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> Next, we have Shira and the Princess oh. of Power, which is a show I really, really like. It was good. I really like that show. There's nothing bad about it. They have gay black characters, uh, they have Shira, <laughs> who is the main character is queer. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like openly. Yeah. Very queer. And like just the, the 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 burning flame of just gayness that was set off. It's yeah. like you could tell from the first episode that Katra and oh spoiler alert <laughs> Spoiler alert Jump to this timestamp. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put what timestamp. Fuck it. You have had time to watch this. <laughs> um Katra and and Cora Cora? <laughs> Shira. What's this bitch name? She, Adelaide? Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I forgot her name. Adora. Adora. <laughs> uh, anyway, Cash and Adora, it's like obvious that they're going to end up together. Yeah, they have so much chemistry throughout the whole entire show. Yeah. And they, they could have been real late. Like, Netflix could have been real lazy about this and been like, oh, they have such good sisterly energy. <laughs> It's like no, you don't grow up with your adopted um, war 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 child <laughs> criminal <laughs> uh, friend and just become sister friends. Nah, you finna fuck. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. Yeah, it's a super adorable show. I will say that there's one. Some people might not find this problematic, but as a trans person, I find it a little problematic. I honestly do not like it 
when you tell someone that this person is trans without giving any indication that they're trans in the TV show and just tweet about it and expect people to just accept that they're oh, a trans yeah, character. Oh, yeah, that's not some Dumbledore head-ass J.K. Rowling yeah, shit. Yeah, it's no. very J.K. Rowling-esque where they just spew out that this character is finally gay and, like, there's no indication that they are in the show. Um, there's no context yeah. clues. There's no actual, like, authentic representation and yes, like, you know, LGBTQ plus people exist just as, you know, anyone else exists, but like, there's still culture, there's yeah. still context, there's still so much you could do yeah. with yeah. the story. Like, give them a partner. Yeah, I'm a very cis assuming trans person, just like Perfuma, but if you are writing a character to be trans, there has to be intentionality of somehow indicating that they are trans because. If any random person watches the show, they're never going to guess Perfuma is a trans. trans. Which is not the point yeah. of them guessing that Perfuma is trans, but there has to be some indication that she is trans so that we understand why that matters. Yeah. It could just be something Perfuma says in passing or like... I am trans. Or some... I am a trans girl. <laughs> Here I go with my two trans feet walking on this trans uh, sidewalk. My trans feet. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, though. Don't, don't do that. that. Uh, I give Shira an A. I just didn't like the fact that they did that. Yeah, Shira, you know... I don't have my glasses on. Put it there, sure. Yeah, okay. give me. Okay, last but not least, we have Adventure Time with Princess Bubblegum and Marceline. And honestly, I haven't really watched Adventure Time that, that like that much and you haven't really watched adventure time i watched 13 episodes of the first season and every time i finished an episode i would just have anxiety <laughs> <laughs> aside from that i do know that princess bubblegum and what's her name marceline Electra? sure marceline <laughs> i don't know um their relationship is very much like explicit also yeah. in the series which i totally appreciate i just don't know any of the lore okay so I really like this couple because of the fact that they have conflict as a couple. A lot of these animated shows where they show gay characters, it's uh, one trick, happy ever after pony stuff. Yeah. Where they don't explore the struggles of being in a relationship. And I think with Princess Bubblegum and Marceline, specifically, I don't really like Adventure Time as a show. It's not my thing. But their relationship is very, very much a relationship. They have yeah. struggles. They've even broken up. It's candid. Yeah in the show but they have feelings for each other you can sense the tension when they're in the same spaces because they were exes and at the end of the show they get a cute little kiss we get a, a confirmed kiss at the end of adventure time and it's just a really cute love story between the two but as far as the show i'm not really i'm not excited about it yeah at all <laughs> But that might, that just might be our opinion on adventure time yeah so in the end because of the queerness aspect of Adventure Time, I do want to give it uh, a B. Yeah. I, I want to give it a B. B plus. Yeah. It's it, cute. it would be like an 89, which in like the English system, I think is an A minus, I think. I don't know. So that's pretty much it for our tier list. Obviously, nobody got a failing grade because we all love these shows and what it represents for our community. Yeah. And people came close. It's close. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my partner's ferocity in this episode for some reason <laughs> that we did. I have a sugar crash, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life. Don't follow my partner. Leave me alone. And I'll see you on the next video. This is Ben. <laughs>